Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy video. This is Dr. Ian from the Veterinary Anatomy channel. Today we will talk about the muscles and some other structures of the head of the ox. So let's get started. So here we have the head of uh, an ox and um, what we've done actually we removed the skin completely so that we can see the superficial muscles of the head in general we can divide the muscles of the head into two main groups the mastication muscles the mastication muscles are thick strong originate and insert to bones and here for example we're talking about the masseter muscle which we are going to dissect in this area the temporal muscle under this superficial muscle there and the gastricus muscle and so on the second group um, is the facial muscle the facial muscles are thin they originate either from the skull or from the surface of other muscles and they generally in insert into other facial muscles or into the skin when this muscle the facial muscles contract they move the features of the eye of the ear uh, and nose lips for example and of course they in this case uh, generate facial expressions so as we said before after removing the skin the first muscle which we can see under the skin is the cutaneous muscle of the face or what's called the facial cutaneous muscle this is the facial cutaneous muscle this you know muscle fibers if you can see it's a very thin muscle located just under the skin and of course uh, called also the platysma Latissima, so the facial cutaneous muscle it's developed in the ox as you can see it has like uh, several bundles of muscle fibers located in this area and extends somehow to the neck area there so what we are going to do is to remove the facial cutaneous muscle and so slowly uh, describe and dissect you know other muscles in this area so in this view and before removing the facial muscle yes we can see some superficial muscles including in this case the zygomaticus muscle this this muscle here zygomaticus muscle somehow because it originates from the area of the zygomaticus arch zygomatic arch and inserts as you can see here into the angle of the mouth zygomaticus muscle the next muscle which we can also see here is this big muscle here this is the levator nasolabialis or the nasolabial levator muscle from the name levator so it pulls nasolabial nasal from nose labial from lips so this muscle is responsible to elevate uh, the uh, nose here in this area and the upper lip so the muscle this muscle is the levator nasolabialis originates uh, in the ox from the midline of the nose here and inserts to the lateral wall of the nostril and to the upper lip again function of this muscle is to elevate or pull the, the upper lip and the nose here um, upward like this so levator nasolabialis or nasolabial levator muscle here in this area and before I move uh, to deep uh, um, structure so here surrounding the eye we can see this muscle it's really not uh, easy to dissect it from the skin this is the orbicularis oculi musculus orbicularis oculi or the orbicular muscle of the eye this one here so this muscle originate normally from a small tendon found in this area here 
or there is a small ligament in this area here connect the muscle to the skull at the medial angle of the eye. So this muscle, as we said before, surrounds the eye completely and of course from the shape of the muscle uh, we can know the function is to close, protect or whatever here the eye. The orbicularis oculi or the orbicular muscle of the eye. So in this area here we have another orbicular muscle, orbicularis oris or the orbicular muscle of the mouth. The orbicular muscle of the mouth is also like a round muscle surround the opening of the mouth completely and it's also somehow difficult in the ox to dissect from the skin. Orbicularis oris or the orbicular muscle of the mouth. So here on this side as uh, we planned we removed completely the superficial cutaneous muscle the facial cutaneous muscle and dissected the underlying muscles again here in this area we can see this muscle this is the levator nasolabialis in the ox as we described originate from the midline of the nose region here and uh, the insertion area of this muscle is the side of the nostril as you can see here and the corner somehow of the upper lip or to the upper lip. In the ox here as you can see we can also notice that this muscle is divided into two parts here and the other part was here and between these two parts uh, we can notice that uh, some other muscles passing through like for example here uh, the levator muscle of the uh, upper lip levator labii maxillaris or the levator muscle of the upper lip and of course here in this area we can also see some fibers of the caninus muscle caninus muscle the next muscle uh, we would like to describe here is this muscle here. This is the zygomaticus muscle. It's actually a long muscle, narrow muscle, originate from the zygomatic arch, which I can palpate here, and at the same time from the surface of the masseter muscle from this area here and uh, inserts, as you can see here, into the corner of the mouth. The action or the function of this muscle is to pull the corner of the mouth upward and reward as you can see here. So this is the zygomaticus muscle. Here in this area we can see the malaris muscle or the malaris muscle is a wide muscle in the ox as you can see very very good developed. Well, you know, um, if you if you work uh, and dissect it, you will find that we can uh, divide it into two parts: the frontal part and the caudal part. Here, uh, in general, it originates from uh, the skull in this region here, from the lateral surface of the nose. So it inserts to the side of the face onto the surface of the buccinator muscle. So this is the buccinator muscle and the masseter and the, in the, the caudal part inserts also to the orbicularis oculi, oculi or the orbicular muscle of the eye. What is the function of the malaris muscle? If we are talking about the frontal part of this muscle, so the function of the frontal part uh, is to lift the skin of the cheek and uh, the function of the caudal part is to pull the lower eyelid downward and of course in this case to open the eye. This is the malaris muscle. Here again just under the levator nasi, uh, naso, naso labialis. this one here if you move it to the side we can see in general like three muscles in the ox here. The upper one here is the levator labii um, superiors or in some books they name it as levator labii 
uh, maxillars from the name it originate from the face from the side of the face here and inserts to the upper lip and from the name the function of it is just to move uh, the lip upward somehow like this because of course we have another one on the other side the next muscle which we can see here is the depressor labii superiors or maxillars this one here is also developed in the in the ox is not present as i know in the horse or in the dog so the depressor labii superiors uh, uh, originate also from the side of the upper jaw and serves to the upper lip between these two muscles in this area we can see this small muscle called the caninus muscle this is the caninus muscle here under the uh, facial cutaneous muscle if you dissect this muscle and move it to the side and under the zygomaticus muscle here we can see a big muscle called the buccinator muscle the buccinator muscle originates from the edge of the tooth uh, sockets of the upper and the lower uh, jaws and inserts to the corner of the mouth this is the buccinator muscle the buccinator muscle yeah let me just show you exactly the location of the buccinator muscle this is the buccinator muscle just under or down here under the uh, facial cutaneous muscle you can see this very developed in the ox muscle this is the depressor labii inferiors or the depressor labii mandibularis in some books so this muscle of course originate from the caudal end of the edge of the tooth sockets in this area here and inserts to the lower lip to the lower lip so this is the lower lip here of course contraction of this muscle will pull the lower lip downward and reward downward and reward okay so this is the depressor labii mandibulars or depressor labii inferiors so both the buccinator and the depressor labii mandibulars are covered by the facial cutaneous muscle let's move to this area here in general before i talk about you know these small muscles here let me just remind you that there is a very big you know muscle flat muscle found in this area here it's considered actually as a cutaneous muscle is so developed in the arc that we can name it also as a frontal muscle so here we have the frontal muscle in this area here in this area here as you can see we have a lot of small muscles you know the the main function of all of this muscle is to move the external ear in all directions so as we know animal they can move their ears better than human that's why these muscles are very developed in some animals and let's just start by reminding you that here of the external ear we have the auricular cartilage in front of the auricular cartilage is something i can palpate here i can show you this is the scotular or scotoform cartilage this one here and now from the origin and insertion of all of this muscle we will try together to get the names of these muscles the first muscle which we can see here extends between the scotular uh, uh, scotulum and the external ear and that's why we will name it as scotolo auricular muscle scotolo auricular or scotolo auricularis muscle this one here if you follow these muscles you will find that these muscles um, insert somehow to the scotoform cartilage the first one here originate from the zygomatic arch this is the zygomatic arch inserts to the scotulum and in this case the name of this muscle is the zygomatico scotularis muscle zygomatico scotularis muscle the next one originate as you can see from the frontal bone there or from the frontal area to the scotulum so frontoscotularis muscle frontoscotularis muscle 
The next one here extends normally in other animals between this scotulum and the other scotulum, and that's why we will name it as interscotular or uh, interscotular muscle or interscotularis, musculus interscotularis. Here in this area, I can see another muscle extends between the zygomatic arch to the external ear. So zygomatico auricular muscle, zygomatico auricularis muscle, zygomatico auricularis muscle. Here in this area, I can see this very interesting muscle extend normally. I just dissected from this structure here. Here we have the parotid gland. So this muscle extends between the parotid gland up to the external ear. So that's why they gave it an, another name like parotido auricular muscle. So this is the parotido auricular muscle. Parotido auricular muscle. Before we move and talk about the organs or whatever structures which we can see here, let me just go one more time through these muscles again. All of these muscles are there to move the ear, external ear, in all directions. The first one here between the scotulum and the external ear is the scotulo, uh, scotulo auricular muscle, scotulo auricularis muscle. Between the scotulum to the zygomatic arch, we have the zygomatico scotularis muscle. Here we have the fronto scotularis muscle and the interscotularis muscle. Here, from the zygomatic arch to the external ear, we have the, the zygomatico uh, auricularis muscle. Zygomatico auricularis muscle. And from the external ear, as we said before, toward the parotid gland, here this muscle called the parotido auricular muscle. Parotido auricular muscle. So if you forget the name of these muscles, please remember or look at the origin and insertion and you will get somehow or you will remember the name of these muscles. Again here in this area it's another part of the uh, facial cutaneous muscle. Yeah so this is the facial cutaneous muscle if we move it to the side we can see here the big muscle the masseter muscle which we are going to dissect before we finish here, we can look at uh, the salivary glands. And in this case, I will move the head a little bit like this. Here you can see the barotid gland. It's huge, very developed, uh, located caudal to the mandible or caudal to the masseter muscle under the external ear. This is the barotid gland, barotid gland. If you dissect here, you will find the parotid duct, which is there to transport the saliva from uh, the parotid duct to the parotid gland to the mouth. Here, just in front of the parotid uh, gland, let me just move this muscle to the side. This is the parotid gl uh, gland. In front of the parotid gland, in this area, we can see the parotid lymph node. So this is here the parotid lymph node, parotid lymph node. So in general, just for your information, to remember these structures, so three structures uh, uh, begins with the same word, parotid gland, parotid duct, and parotid lymph node. Caudal to the mandible in this area here and under the parotid uh, gland here, we can see another gland, this big one here. It's very, very big in the ox. This is the mandibular gland, located somehow caudal to the, uh, to the mandible under, under, or it's covered by the parotid gland. So let me just try to show you this gland. This is the mandibular gland. It's huge. Yeah, start from here. This is all. This is also another part of the barot, uh, mandibular gland. In front of the mandibular grand, uh, gland in this area, we can also see this structure here called the mandibular lymph node. The mandibular lymph node. I hope it's clear for you. Again, the same situation like the parotid gland. Here we have also the parotid gland. Sorry, sorry. The same situation we described for the parotid gland. And we say that there is a small lymph node in front of it. it has the same name parotid lymph node. Here we have also the mandibular salivary gland 
and in front of it we have the mandibular lymph node. Just in front of the masseter muscle here in this area, we can find three main structures. The first one is the facial nerve. So the facial nerve uh, located in this area is responsible for the innervation of all facial muscles we described in this video. So this is the facial nerve. Next to the facial nerve, we can see the facial artery the facial artery and next to it we have also the facial vein the facial vein the facial artery gives some branches here to the face the first one exactly like my finger the first one this this area here is the inferior labial artery the next one is the superior the superior um, uh, superior labial artery we have the lateral uh, the lateral uh, here we have the lateral uh, nasal artery and finally we have the dorsal nasal artery and finally here we have the vein or the artery of the angle of the eye into the median angle of the eye in this direction this is the branches of the facial artery and actually uh, in the same way you will find the veins with the same names moving or following these arteries and collecting blood from this area to find to the to the facial vein uh, which moves down and meet with the lingual vein to form the lingofacial vein up to the external jugular vein